I'm Sally Chambers. I'm the Digital Humanities Research Coordinator here at Ghent Centre for Digital Humanities um, as part of Ghent University and I also on a day-to-day -day basis coordinate Daria Belgium. On a day-to-day -day basis I'm involved in Daria um, but we're also doing some work with Clarin uh, and also a little bit with SESTA as well so we try to have a spread of uh, social sciences and humanities infrastructures. Good question. Um, well, I think the role of a digital humanities research coordinator, so I, I see my day-to-day -day job as trying to bring digital enabled research to all the researchers in our faculty and beyond. So within the Ghent Centre for Digital Humanities, we are focusing on the Faculty of Arts and Philosophy, but we also work with the social and political scientists and also with the psychology department. So we see um, digital research in social science, arts, humanities is quite broad. So that's my job, is to go out and try and meet people, contact people, find out what they're doing, do they need something in terms of digital research and try and bring the right people in contact with each other. So that's a lot of the outreach role. Um, impact at the moment one of the core areas we're working on is collaborative databases. So many different research groups and individual researchers put data in Excel sheets or access databases. They've got a lot of them and they not necessarily talk, thought about research data management. What happens if my laptop breaks, if the hard disk that this um, uh, Excel spreadsheet is on, can multiple people work on the same spreadsheet at the same time or not? Um, so I think there's a lot of going, things going on, a lot of similar work being in do, done in different uh, uh, research groups across our faculty. So if we can help to try and um, help with good data management practices, think about sustainability of that research data. So there is a three-year, five-year funded project um, what happens with the data afterwards, um, what can we do to sort of think about that from before the project starts, what IT support do they need, can we involve people in that process to try and um, sustain that because it's often patchwork funding so somebody's interested in a like say um, the southern Dutch dialects, we're working with some dialectologists at the moment, so they've been going now 40, 50 years collecting questionnaires and uh, how all the different dialect words in, in Flanders uh, are, are used. And this is a huge resource, it's a huge longitudinal study, and how can we um, instill good data management practices in that so that the, this legacy um, stays on for, for many years. I think it's still about bringing people together. So for example, uh, I've got a, an example of a social science researcher. She said um, she wanted to do some work on her laptop and her laptop wasn't powerful enough. So she said, hey, you don't happen to know if there's a supercomputer at Ghent University? And I said, ah, yes, I do. So I was able to put her in contact with the supercomputing center and they helped her, they gave her training in how to use a supercomputer and then she could process all the data. She was working on um, speeches, uh, doing network analysis on speeches of European parliamentary papers. So she was able to do a lot of her processing on the supercomputer for example. So I think in a day-to-day -day impact that had a huge impact on her because she could do, you know, instead of cr cranking on her computer, she could do the results, the analysis she wanted to do a lot quicker. Um, I think it's also to do with visibility as well and making connections. So for example, we can put researchers in contact with each other, so from different research groups. Uh, and for example, we've got a new um, public library and digital innovation centre here in, in Ghent called The Croak. Um, so it's really nice because we've got the public library underneath and then we've got um, the University of Ghent and all 
various different research groups who are working on digital initiatives that may not have necessarily worked together. The Ghent Centre for Digital Humanities is also part of that group, so we can start getting to know each other, understanding what our different research fields are, and then work together in different ways and making interconnections. So. The impact, we're starting to get to know each other at this stage, but uh, for example today I had an international visitor and introduced him to one of the professors in, in the Croak and he, they immediately thought, ah yes, we could do this and we could do that and perhaps apply for funding for that. So I would say that that's quite a big impact. For me, one of the biggest impacts so far has been, well for me personally, has been to understand what research infrastructures are. And I think there's various, so when I was working with uh, the European infrastructures, it sort of was like this meta thing. Um, but now coming to Ghent University, it's seeing what research infrastructures are on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is where the collaborative databases come in. So I could be sitting with the dialectologists, I could be sitting with the cinema historians, I could be sitting with the Roman historians, I could be sitting with the archeologists, I could be sitting with the literary studies people. And a lot of them are collecting various types of different research data in various databases. And they need to work on it together. Um, they need to think about, yeah, they all going through data modeling questions. Um, yeah, they've got people, they've got things, they've got publications, how can they link all this data? And I think this has been really valuable through research infrastructures that we have the ability to be able to reflect on these things and make the interconnections between very different areas of research even within the broad arts and humanities. So um, I think that through the work of data research data management for example we've had training sessions, we've had doctoral school students one doctoral school student recently said, well, I want to move from spreadsheet hell to database dreams. And I thought we're going to be, she's going to be publishing a blog post on that soon, but it's really somebody fighting with an Excel sheet uh, on their personal laptop to making that into a user-friendly space where multiple people can log in at the same time, they can share their research data, they can say, hey, uh, what do you think about this? And we can, you know, do all this work together. So I think that step-by-step -step process, we'll just gain a, 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 a database, database expert, an ICT specialist to help us out with this. Um, but I think that will be a huge impact for the different research groups within our faculty. It's about word of mouth. I still think that that works really well. So if our supercomputing uh, social scientist says, hey, I use the supercomputer, it was really cool, it really helped, they're really friendly, they really helped me with what to do, and they have another researcher, and they, they said, oh, I'm having problems with my laptop. If, if one says it to the other, then they all go and try it out as well. So I think this word of mouth community, a recommendation from another researcher could be really, really valuable, I think. Individual researchers, well, they are our lifeblood. Without a research, well, Dari is called for researchers by researchers. So that's our tagline. I mean, for me, you can set up a supercomputer, you can set up a data infrastructure, you can set up servers, but if nobody uses it, then what? that's all very nice, but what's the point? So um, I think it's, it's more than they can help with impact and outreach of research infrastructure. They are the, the pure, why we need them in the first place. I mean, these are providing the user needs. What do you need? We're trying to facilitate research. So I think that why are we going to build um, empty boxes? Yeah, we just need the researchers. I, yeah. Publications are a very important um, outreach activity. I think researchers are extremely busy. They're trying to teach, they're trying to supervise research, they're trying to get project funding in. I think the time factor is a huge barrier to outreach. Um, I think it is connected to how researchers are assessed as well. 
So I think that that, that is probably because they have to get so many different points in A1 journals and all of this, then yeah, doing these extra things may, yeah, it's in a very squeezed agenda. So I think that is probably one of the key barriers is lack of time. I mean, I think, I mean, the example of the croak and getting in touch, for example, with um, members of the public. So um, we've got a very interesting project at Ghent University f that is done for Flanders, it's called the Digimeter. So they're looking at the use of uh, digital, of the internet, uh, of mobile phones, of technology in European, in, in, in Flemish citizens. So they're all measuring how people use the internet in Flanders. And that just wouldn't happen without the infrastructure. We need people, we need to be able to, to, to get in contact with people, to, to have labs where people can come and test out different kinds of software. So I think that is really valuable and it's done, for example, that's why it's in the croak. Um, this is the public library, it's a place where people come and I think without that infrastructure, this outreach would maybe be made a lot more difficult.